Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I've, I started. I started to work on the. I was. I promised I would work on a tuning video for for uh, ZFS, but I'm going to hold off because I keep hearing from people that are saying, "I don't understand a word you're saying." I, I'm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to to follow you, but I just don't understand the the, the language and the lingo. So, all right, all right. I'm going to try something to, different today, and. I, and that is, I'm going to try to engage with uh, with the creators. On, let's say, let's pick YouTube, and I'm going to try to speak in English. And uh, I can do that. I uh, used to do some of it <laughs> years ago, if I still remember how. I, you know, we're going to talk today about data storage. And they, as a creator, that's probably not the most exciting part of the thing of being a YouTube or a content creator. It's certainly not as exciting as getting a new camera or some new lighting or a new set, but it is one of the most critical things that you need. If you think about it, every video that you make, every project, every thumbnail lives on a hard drive somewhere. And what happens when you run out of space? You can't find the file you need. Or worse, the drive you have has your content fails. So when your channel grows, so does the number of files that you need to manage. You can, I mean, I know a lot of people, myself included, that started out with, with these, with uh, USB drives. You know, you, you had uh, a whole stack of these things that you used to put your videos on, which is great at first when you only have, you know, a half a dozen of these or so. But as the number grows, they won't fit on one of these. And so you have to get a second one and then a third and then a fourth and Pretty soon, you you uh, you don't remember where the, your project is, and then you start labeling the drives, and you and you you end up in a shuffle. Somebody has it that's working on something, and you don't know where it went. And that happens. So, so that's just not workable. That's not what we want to do. There's got to be a better way to handle videos and something that will grow with our channel and protect our work. And that is where storage systems come in. That's what they are designed to, to solve, that kind of a problem. As a creator, your data is your lifeline. It's not just videos. It's all the things that go into it. It's, you might have a pile of B-roll. You may have music tracks. You might have multiple project files that are working on different pieces that you're assembling into a final video. Then you have thumbnails and you have descriptions of the video and titles and things that you need to go with it. Even though you might think that the you know, USB drive might be the right way to start, you're soon going to find that that is just not going to fly. Do it right. Don't, don't start with the USB devices to start with. They're a good backup, but not necessarily the best way to, uh, to store your, your work. You're ready to create your final video and then it starts writing about halfway through it says hey i don't have enough disk now you got a problem right you can't finish the thing you're on until you find a drive or are able to get a drive that's large enough to handle the project that you're currently working on does that any of this sound familiar to you uh it, yeah you can go get another usb device but that's just not a long-term fix you're just going to run into it again and again, and again. The next step is to find a real story solution. And there are three popular paths that content creators choose today. The most common by far is Synology NAS. There's also TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale. Both of those are products that are offered by IX Systems. You can also go the do-it-yourself route right if you're more a technical user and more savvy and you don't mind building it yourself, you're familiar with how to build a server and networking and command lines don't bother you. So, but let's let's just break down what each one of these offers and, and we'll go into more of the pros and cons in the next video. Synology NAS are devices that are really known for just being simple and easy to set up. They have a great menu system that's easy to understand and grasp and it'll get you started quickly. So they're kind of an off-the-self solution that works well for creators and other people that are trying to store data as well. But they don't want to spend a lot of time trying to learn all the ling lingo and the mumbo-jumbo, as somebody once said. 
about how to make things work in the computer world. You're just not interested in it. It's not your thing. It's not what you're trying to do. So it, those come with applications like uh, one is Synology Drive and Quick Connect. Those uh, allow you to set up and share files between team members or uh, allow them to access projects remotely across the Internet. So, uh, yeah, you'll probably find some videos where they're showing Synology a attached directly to your your uh, outside modem. Mm, don't do that. I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no. Uh, that's a good way to get ransomware installed on your storage system. But, however, Synology simplicity also comes with some limitations. There are advanced features like snapshots and multi-user editing and scaling that are usually only available on the high-end models. They're not available like on the J-series. And Synology runs proprietary. It is based on Linux, but they have custom fit everything together to make a, co a, a very simple, cohesive menu system that flows from one workflow task to the next. The only disadvantage that, to Synology is that you're going to feel somewhat locked into their ecosystem eventually. Because if you want advanced features, some of them are behind paywalls and you'll find yourself having to pay more money in order to be able to use those features or in order to get the feature you want, you need to upgrade your, your uh, storage device to one of the larger models. And those are usually getting expensive. There's also TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale. They do, IX Systems does sell ready-made systems that are already have those products installed on them. And you can purchase one of those and they will come either with or without pre-configured storage. And then you're, you plug and play. You just plug it in and you're ready to go. Or you can buy the drives yourself and then do the setup yourself. TrueNAS uses a technology called ZFS, ZFS. ZFS doesn't stand for anything, although a lot of people say it stands for Zettabyte File System, which is true. I mean, it that is the maximum size. You can even imagine. I can't imagine a Zettabyte. That is a huge amount of data. It's more data than I would need to store. But, it, uh, but that storage platform was designed and built by Sun Microsystems, who at the time had control over most of the web systems that were out there. And they built it because ZFS offered the best data integrity. So it tries to keep your files available to you no matter what. And it has some of the most advanced file sharing features in it that are available. There have been a lot of people attempt to copy ZFS and they've done it wrong or done it badly. TrueNAS Core is generally for home users. These are generalizations. Don't just take this at face value. You certainly can use TrueNAS Core in Enterprise. And TrueNAS scale is generally considered for multi-user cloud-enabled environments. So as, as you grow, the idea behind it is, is that you would move from core to scale. However, you know, you could start out with scale. I, I don't think I would recommend that because there are, you really have to know what you're doing with scale up to, you know, a certain amount. Of, so you're kind of at an enterprise level where you probably have people that are dedicated that do those things. With enterprise-grade features like snapshots and multi-user access, uh, then you, have, of course, have backup automation, which is good for, that is perfect for disaster recovery. When all else fails, you have a, a complete backup of your system. So ZFS is perfect for creators and, that are serious about needing storage. Uh, so, yeah, it grows with you. What's the trade-off? So TrueNAS requires some dedicated hardware and some technical know-how to set up and maintain. It isn't that it's really tough to do. Uh, it's just that it's probably something that maybe you'll want to take some time and read about before messing around with it. Uh, it comes with a pre-configured set of tunables or variables that are adequate for kind of a general purpose. But over time, you may find that you need to fine-tune it to what you're doing. There's also the do-it-yourself. That was a ZFF server. That would probably be more for the more adventurous that aren't aren't uh, too concerned about 
uh, having to build a server and put their network cards in and maybe their graphics card and and uh, configuring up their uh, storage pool to match the hardware performance that they're looking for and then get it all working together. So, and then in this case, yeah, you choose every piece of hardware from the motherboard and the drives to the power supply, everything you choose and put it together. But if you're up to, for that challenge, a do-it-yourself server can deliver enterprise-grade storage at definitely a fraction of the cost. So, but each of these solutions has strengths and limitations, as you might expect. But what ties them together is something they all rely on, and that is disk. Whether you choose Synology, uh, TrueNAS, or you go the do-it-yourself route, there, the storage server provides the core storage technology that protects your data, manages your files, and allows you to grow your channel and provide additional capabilities on demand. So as you need them, you buy them and install them. Uh, and it should be simple to do. It shouldn't be, oh my God, I got I to gotta go get a whole new system and learn an entire new thing. So I guess let's start with what is ZFS? ZFS, that's a file system and a storage management system that's designed to provide data safety. Data safety? What? What do you mean? Well, it will constantly look for errors and fix them. It isn't just looking for errors. It's fixing the errors as you go along. So it's kind of worry-free. That's kind of the idea. It was built by engineers that really didn't want to have to deal with all the the steps that you had to go through in the event of a failure. So they wanted the system to manage itself and to fix that stuff for them so they didn't have to worry about it. It also provides reliability and scalability, it allows you to scale up as you need to. ZFS was built for data integrity from the ground up. There are times where ZFS can't fix the problem. It, you might get to a you might have multiple drive failures. Anything can happen in, a, in this world. So you may have multiple drive failures and you may have all kinds of issues. And But Z, ZFS will, will shut down. It won't continue to corrupt your data. It will just say, well, I got a problem I can't fix. I'm just going to stop. Now, some RAID systems that are out there will just keep going. And they'll corrupt all of your data until you got nothing left. Uh, ZFS won't do that. It'll it'll just say, no, I'm, I can't go any further. I'm just going to shut down. And I'll, how does it do this? So ZFS uses something called checksums, and that's used to detect correct uh, and correct file corruption. So your data stays accurate and intact. You can even create snapshots, which you can think of as a save point in your game. So if you're playing games and you do a save, that's like a snapshot. It allows you a point in time that you can re you can relog back into the game, and in this case, it's being able to stop and flip the file system back to the way it was before you issued that command that deleted all the files in the uh, data set. But that lets you roll back to an earlier version of your project if something goes wrong, and you don't have to go find a backup tape to do it. It's just part of the file system. So as your storage needs grows with your YouTube channel, how do you handle this? Where do you start? As you start out with a YouTube channel, you may, you may, you may reach over and go, well, gosh, I have one of these. I think I can just put my, my uh, videos here. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> go, get a, uh, go get a storage system that has two bays in it uh, to start with. Uh, as a small creator. And if you want to choose Synology to start out with, great, do it. I mean, that's fine. I know you'll end up on ZFS eventually. Trust me, you will. Uh, but when you're starting out, yeah, use use at least a true drive NAS. And that gives you redundancy, uh, but no, you don't have snapshots. Just remember, you don't have snapshots there. But you do have redundancy and some reliability. It's not a backup. Don't think of it that way. Uh, when you buy your two drive, drive uh, bay, buy a second one so you can back up this one to that one. Yeah, and then you'll then you'll have peace of mind that you have. And don't don't touch the backup unless you need to. Just back up to it, and that's all you do. You might want to test it though to see if all your stuff got over there. That'd be a good idea before you find out you need it. 
So as you add, as you get to a medium creator, that would be, I would consider that to be 50K to 100K subscribers. So those with those, uh, those, with those type of subscribers, you're probably going to find yourself in more frequent uploads. You'll, uh, the file management becomes harder. You'll need more storage and you'll need more backup options. And you may even start to hire additional employees to help you with video editing. And in that case, you're probably going to be looking for something like a snapshot feature just in case somebody does something wrong. So a true NAS server or a Synology uh, NAS offer centralized storage and file sharing and redundancy and all that stuff to protect your growing library. That's what it does. But what happens when you reach 100K? And I hope you do. I hope you reach a million as well. So at this level, your channel is producing daily uploads. You're, you're probably doing live streams somewhat. You're probably doing sponsored projects and probably a lot of those. And many of those are probably sponsoring your channel. So a ZFS-based server becomes essential here. So here you'll need direct from server editing, multi-user access and automated backups and probably an automated snapshot mechanism. So when you reach the enterprise level at somewhere above a million subscribers, your storage needs are going to become mission critical at this point because, yeah, your channel's starting to make real money. And I, I mean the kind of money that uh, corporations uh, make. And this is when you turn the and this is when you turn the wheel into enterprise. It's at this level that, and maybe even at the 100 k to one million, you may hit that already where 45 drives, would they have a product called Storinator. There's a number of them. There's a, a 15, a 30, and a 45, I think. But those are all designed to store, you know, a certain amount of data and grow to multi-petabyte uh, amounts of data storage all on site. And they also do high-speed networking, and they also do global collaboration support. So... That is where ZFS really shines because that is the kind of environment that ZFS was 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 developed for. So hopefully you get some idea about understanding. <laughs> yeah, you can start with Synology, but you'll end up with ZFS. I I think you will. I think you will. I can't guarantee it. I don't know. I can't. I don't have a crystal ball. Well, I have a crystal ball, but it doesn't work anymore. So, so now that you understand the basics of growing your storage as a creator. It's time to learn how ZFS can take your setup to the next level. So that's what we're going to do in the next part. And the second part of this, we're going to look at snapshots and backups and storage expansion. We'll look at data migration as well. Everything you need to future-proof your content workflow. So stay tuned for that. And that's all I had today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you next time. And bye for now.